if you set up a table for this, the easiest thing to do, first of all, you got to put this expression in here. You need brackets around the top before you get too far into it. 2 plus x, because you got to use x instead of h, even though we really want an h, squared minus, if you really want to work that number out in your head, you can, but you can do 16 times 2 squared if you don't trust yourself. That whole thing divided by x. Set up your table. I would put it on ask because then you can control what numbers you enter. Otherwise, it fills it out for you. You want it to, I don't know why you'd ever want to put your own y values in. I mean, I guess, you, I don't know. Actually, maybe you could work the other way now that I think about it. I wonder if you could put this on ask and it'll calculate the x. Does it do that? Wow, that'd be, we have to try that because that'd be, that'd save a lot of time. I'm trying that right now. You're trying that now. Uh, anyways, if he changes to ask, it doesn't matter what you're starting with. Like, it doesn't matter what table start and change in table is. The graph's not really going to have much of a meaning in this situation. Look at that. I could almost well, you use... You press enter to make the y focus. You press enter and also the y. Ah, uh, I see it doesn't show up till I got it. If the points are one unit apart, so from two seconds to three seconds. That's the average, right? Remember, don't lose sight of what we're doing here. We're set, we set up an expression that we can use to push the points together. If there's one second in between, if the difference between the two is one second, the average is 80 feet per second. I'm going to try 0.5 next. What do, we hap what, what do we expect to happen if I make it lower? It's going to decrease because I'm coming. The point's coming from the right side. Okay, remember, let's let's make sure we can connect this with what's happening here. This is if I'm going from three. That's that's what 80 is. The slope of that is 80. If you go between two and three, it's 80. I'm going to push it now to this half a half a unit in between, half a second in between, and that's going to make this 72. It's a little bit lower, right? We could make this 0.2 next. So the equivalent of doing this again now, approximately 0.2, wherever that is, somewhere in there. The slope of the line is closer to the, what the actual tangent line is, the actual instantaneous speed. 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.01. What's happening to those values as you keep going? Yeah, they're getting closer to 64. Now with your newfound understanding of the word limit, limits, what could you say about that? 64 is kind of the limit of that function we punched in. It's it has a it has a limit as you as you as x approaches not this time infinity as x approaches yeah zero the x values are getting smaller and smaller closer and closer to zero like if we put this in now it's not actually exactly 64 but it's so close that the calculator has to display it like that. If you if you go closer and closer here, the slope is 64. The instantaneous slope, okay, this is the this is the grand finale here, and we're gonna have to draw the line there. But the uh, understanding that you have to have is the instantaneous slope is if you look at the limit of this expression as x approaches infinity. Okay, the instantaneous. Zero, yeah, thank you. Instantaneous speed is the limit of this expression. As h, not x, right? As h, because we, on the calculator, we used x, but as h approaches zero. If you wanted to do it um, with symbols, you'd have to say something like the limit of, well, the limit of 16 times 2 plus h squared minus 16 times 2 squared over h. The limit of that as h approaches zero is equal to, what did we say that's equal to? 64. 
if you if you leave this part out over here, it's not equal to 64. It's close to 64. The limit means it is 64 because in, if if you actually let it get there, it's 64. Now the problem here is that we couldn't just figure like when we had infinity, we couldn't. You can't sub in infinity. You could actually sub in zero here, but if you sub in zero, you're going to notice something doesn't quite work here, right? Why can't we just sub in a zero to figure out? Like we wrote the expression, we could just sub in h is zero. Yeah, the denominator is undefined. It is defined in this. Like there's a real value in the situation, but we're going to look at how we deal with limits, how you can work with them next time. But for today, the key is just understanding what it means to talk about a limit of something and to, to notice what the connection is between average speed, instantaneous speed, as you push that closer together there. This uh, applet is on my website if you want to use it, this thing. okay. There's a few other calculus ones there if you want to look at them. Make use of it. Also on the, on the Internet, I've been again, I said I'm uploading the videos of this.